Are we live? It says that we are, so I'm going to pretend that we are. Hello, Pat. First one in the comment section. Everybody pile in here. Come on in here. Pile in. Push in. Don't worry about social distancing. Get as close as you want. Jam into the comment section. Uh, type in where you are. Say hi. Just say, you know, be friendly. Be social. That sort of thing. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Bunker. This is the Bunker Nation show, and I'm going to be your host for the evening. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Got a little bags under my eyes. I don't ever see myself until I'm sitting here staring at this camera. I uh, was up late last night because we had a storm blew in, and uh, it was very, very windy. Hello, Mary in Oregon. You guys come in and type where you are, all that sort of thing. Hit the like button, especially if you're on YouTube. YouTube likes are like gold in the bank. Hello, Ethan. So anyways, we had a storm blow in, and uh, we hadn't had any rain in forever. Things were just dying. And uh, we got some rain last night, maybe a quarter of an inch. But we had a severe windstorm. It was shaking the house. And so I was up for a couple of hours at 2 o'clock, and I usually get up at 3 to 3.30, and, and I didn't because when I finally fell asleep, I just, my, uh, hello, Richard, hello, Russ. I uh, decided to stay in bed. Rest was more important. So I didn't end up getting up till about six or seven. So it's like complete waste of the morning. Hello from, hello, Miami. You're having wine now. It's not wine, but it is uh, Porter. Cheers to you. I'll be glad to take whatever stupid questions that you have. Uh, <laughs> some people might not be able to read your question your uh, comment because uh, maybe they're on Facebook or one of the other formats. By the way, we could be adding some new formats. I can't announce any yet, but we might be adding some new ones. We're already on three Facebook channels or, or pages, and we're doing YouTube, and we're doing uh, Periscope, which is Twitter. And then we might be adding some more. Uh, anyways, we'll get into all that stuff later. I hope everybody's doing all right. I got a fan blowing on me. I got a light working. We got this thing working. We got the battery pack going. I hope everything lasts long enough for us to do the show. I have not had the opportunity to watch last night's episode of Yellowstone, which had a song in it by my friend Garrett Bradford. And I saw all the um, ripples of other people watching it and posting it and posting on Instagram and all that, but I have not been able to see it yet. So I'm going to... Uh, Soon as this thing is over, I'm going to see if I have another po uh, enough power left in the battery pack to watch that episode. Are potatoes a good staple food? I heard that you could live long on them. So, uh, uh, potatoes are basically a good, complete food. Not as good as sweet potatoes, but they're really, really good. Uh, they're very high in starch. Um, they store well underground in the proper humidity and proper temperature. Uh, and um, they can be dried dehydrated, um, different, they can be canned. Canning potatoes takes a lot of energy and a lot of time, and you don't get a whole lot of food quality and calories in the amount of space and time that it takes to can a jar. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying there are other ways to store potatoes. Primarily what we use is we have these big railroad wooden boxes and we have them filled with sand, and we take the, the potatoes down to the root cellar and we bury them in the sand. And they do really well. So yes, potatoes are a great food. They're also quite easy to grow in most places. Uh, and so they're, they're a good staple food. Uh, uh, and, and if you can build yourself a, a non-electric dehydrator, you can grow all the potatoes you want. You can dehydrate them. And you can store a lot of potatoes in a little bitty space. So, yeah, we had a lot of wind. Tonight, we're going to be talking about pattern recognition uh, through a lot of different venues. But we're ba I'm going to be building up to something. I'm going to teach you something about survival. And I'm going to answer a lot of questions about that people ask me all the time. Is how do you read the news? How do you know what's true? How do you know, uh, how do you know what to believe? All of these. And so I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, a secret, something that I've been doing for a very, very long time. And I've answered these questions 
obliquely about I don't watch the news. I don't I have not watched an episode or a show of CNN or Fox News in so many years I can't recall. Um, and, and I the, the only aside is uh, when I went to my parents' house, when they were reading the Mueller report, my parents had uh, Fox News on. And so I watched that. None of it's true. What about potatoes or about pattern recognition? Now I can't go forward until Danielle decrypts her cryptic message about the rain, about the windstorm, about pattern recognition, or or what? What is it that's not true, Danielle? By the way, Danielle's not here now. She's she's back up in the city, uh, Lord willing. About news channels, I haven't watched any news. I have not. I cannot think of any. I've watched a news program. Come on. Oh, you're saying the news isn't true. See, you got to be better on explaining. The news is not true. You're right. I thought you were saying what I was saying about it wasn't true. I was like, what in the world is he talking about? Uh, and so, but because of that, people, they they ask me sometimes, how do you do it? How, how, how am I supposed to find out what's going on? How do I know what's really happening if I don't watch the news? And so what happens is we have two I'm not slow, you are cryptic. So what happens is, is we have basically this binary system and everybody is funneled into a left or a right paradigm as far as where they get their news. All the channels are either right or they're left. And I'm going to be showing a video, not tonight, but in the near future, uh, that I talked about from Francis Schaefer about how they can, and I'm going to talk about some of it about it tonight, how they can shape your opinion of things based on how they frame the news, even if you never watch the article, even if you never uh, watch the news, uh, your opinion of things can be framed for you by very clever patterns and, and things. And so what I'm going to do tonight is I don't know if I can teach you how to do it, but I can show you how it's done and how you can understand a lot of what's going on. But to do so, we're going to probably cover a lot of bases, a lot of different categories and ways of thinking. We're going to take basically a, a big 1,500-piece puzzle. We're going to dump it out on the table, start flipping over the pieces. So at least the sky pieces and the ground pieces and the tree pieces and the animal pieces are all faced up. So you can, when they're all face down, it doesn't really help that much. All right. So um, one of the things that you might hear me say a lot, and maybe I don't define it or describe it enough, is that sometimes you have to pan back. Going back to the very beginning of the COVID thing, I started telling people the thing is not the thing. The thing that you're seeing, the thing that you're being told, the thing that you think is the thing is never the thing, but there's always another thing. And another, the another thing is always the reaction of the people that causes, through unintended, unintended consequences, the things that you really should be concerned about. So most of the time, you don't have to be concerned about an item in the news or a thing that's happening or um, some uh, event, some conspiracy, something. You have to worry about the what that causes in the body politic or in the social system. And so I've been saying that for months and months and months and months. And so that was one of the big clues about how you can watch things. You can pan back, step back and see a bigger uh, picture, and you can start to uh, determine what's happening. And so a lot of times I get messages from people, and I'm not, I'm going to be real clear here. I'm not beating up anybody. I'm not complaining about people contacting me and asking me questions. I'm not complaining about people sending me videos and asking me what they think about it. I have no problem with those things. When you hear me complain about people private messaging me videos, I'm only talking about the people that send me a video and they don't give me any personal or private reason to open it. They don't say, hey, Michael, I was wondering what's going on here. Maybe you can tell me. Or, hey, I don't know if you'd seen this, but it was something that made me think of you. Private message is not the place to post stuff you want everybody that follows you or everybody you know to see. That's what your wall is for. I did a whole show about that. I'm just saying when I start to talk about some of this stuff, some people take it personally and they're like, well, I do that. Maybe he's mad at me. I'm not mad at you at all. 
if you ever send me a video or you send me a piece of news and you say, hey, what do you think about this? I'm glad to tell you what I think. And so I don't have a problem with that. But people do that. And that's what I'm talking about. And so sometimes I'll get questions like, hey, this I heard that this thing happened. I heard that there was, you know, um, an assassination attempt on uh on the president or the vice president or something like this happened. And it's not in the news because I'm told they're covering it up. And usually I will respond very quickly because there are enough clues. If you under, understand patterns and you understand how the news works, you know, understand how politics works and you understand how conspiracies work. There's usually enough data when someone asks me a question. Yes, everybody hit the like button. Um, ask me a question that I can usually tell them off the top of my head whether something is true or not or whether it's junk and fake news. And so uh, recently, a good friend uh, asked me what I thought about a whole series of indictments that had been handed down and uh, uh, had an insider that had told this person that uh, the, a bunch of indictments had gone down, a major, major, major um, news story and um, and so I wanted, you know, I thought, well, if that's true, that's huge, something I want to see. And so I went and looked around for it. And the thing is, people believe that uh, on both sides of this political um, dialectic, that whoever it is, their bad, their bad guy, their boogeyman, who's controlling everything, is so powerful that they're capable of just keeping everything out of the news. And that's why Twitter is is banning news and Facebook is banning news that somehow in an era when it's absolutely impossible to keep anything a secret, that there are some uh, uh, king makers out there that are actually controlling everything to the point that major indictments could be handed out to major people in the country and nobody would know about it. It wouldn't be on Twitter. Nobody would be talking about it. There wouldn't even be ripples. And one of the things I explained was, is even if it were true, and it's not, that they have the power to completely silence some bit of news. They don't. And I'll tell you how they do that. Uh, there still would be no way for them to control the ripples that are that are the result of it. So if you were FBI director uh, or former FBI director and a, and a uh, indictment had gone out in your name and had been published in your name, not only would it be impossible to keep that secret, but your lawyer would be doing something. There would be messages. There would be news that's ancillary to it that a lot of people may not look at, but I go look at, right? And so there's ways to find out what's going on. But most of the time, most people operate from a uh, such a limited, fragmented uh, point of view that they're always looking at a thing. They're always focused. They zoom in rather than zoom out. So when, you, when you're looking at the news, let's say you're looking at a news aggregator. Let's say you're looking at the Drudge Report or you're looking at Yahoo News or some news aggregator that's a page of links of stories that supposedly have gone on throughout the day. People, um, first of all, they read the headlines and a whole lot of people never ever click on the articles. And even if they do, they click on it, they read the, the headline and the lead, and then they don't read the rest of the article, which often says the opposite of what the headline was. But they also are focusing in on storylines or on specific instances that interest them. That's how the control mechanism works. What they're not doing is panning back and looking for patterns. I mentioned the Drudge Report because the Drudge Report is an interesting example. I am not making a pol pol uh, political commentary here. I'm telling you the way things work. The Drudge Report, uh, a lot of people for a lot of years have believed that the Drudge Report is a conservative news aggregator. It's not, and it never has been. It has always been a propaganda uh, uh, outlet for the deep state, for the right-wing part of the deep state. The deep state is a binary machine that moves 
intentionally by intentionally moving the left foot, then intentionally moving the right foot in reaction to it. And by this means, it can move the whole body politic in whatever direction it wants to go. And so we have left wing aggregators and right wing aggregators that are all tied in with the um, deep state and they all get their marching orders and they all publish the stories and they label the stories or headline the stories in a way that recognizes that most people don't click through and read the article. And even if they do, they read the lead and they don't read the whole article because a lot of times in the last paragraph of the article, the writer itself will blow off everything that was said above it by saying, of course, all of this is speculation or this hasn't happened yet or something else like that. And so when you look at something like the Drudge Report, which is a page full of data, uh, about, I would say I've noticed it maybe 10 or 20 times since 1991 or 92 when I started looking at the Drudge Report. There are actually messages that are built into the page as a whole. You can't see them if you're reading left to right or if you're reading the titles. But if you pan back and look at the whole page, quite often there will be seven to eight pictures spaced throughout the page and all of them will have a similar uh, picture or similar hand gesture. And those hand gestures might be pointing to particular things. And these are subliminal uh, clues caused to make you think a certain thing because they know you're not reading the articles. And this happens on Yahoo and it happens on a lot of different of the aggregators. And so it doesn't happen every day, but it happens quite a lot. And if you just go through in one day and you read all the headlines on the Drudge Report and then pan back and think about it, you'll get the message that the right wing of the deep state wants you to get. So if their whole thing is that you need to panic because of the post office or because of voting or because of uh, 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 riots in the streets or whatever it is, then there's going to be a heavy emphasis on those things spaced throughout the page. Some of them will be red. Some of them might have a flashing thing. And then that way you're, you're supposed to think. The same thing happens on the left-wing sites. Those things are used to move the public, to cause you to react. And I did a whole show on why you should not react, why you should be able to sit there and think. Don't ask about a reliable outlet yet, because if you do so, you're going you're gonna to miss the point. It doesn't matter whether there's a reliable outlet. It doesn't matter. You can know exactly what's happening in the world. You can know exactly what the truth is without ever having some source of news that tells you what the news is. And I'm going to tell you how to do That's where we're going with this. That's by using pattern recognition and learning the reality of the world and how it operates, all right? And so you don't really need to have a news outlet that's, that it has integrity. They will tell you that they have integrity. And here's the way that news works. And when somebody contacts me and they say, something happened and, uh, and they're covering it up, that's generally not true just because it's an impossibility anymore. It's impossible to cover up some event that happened where there were thousands of people with phones and cameras and typing into Twitter or, or, or whatever their social media is. What they do is they tell you exactly what happened. They tell you the whole truth or maybe 99 or 95% of the truth. And then they plant depending on whether you're on the left or the right, or you're getting your stories from Drudge Report, or you're getting them from Yahoo, or you're getting from MSNBC, they plant 5% that are either false stories, fake news, or that are made to uh, satisfy that particular element of the audience. So you never know what happened because everybody, have you not seen where they posted pictures of the same, the USA Today, that went out on the same day and they had the exact same pictures and the same uh, uh, headlines maybe, but then parts of them were changed to, to appeal to a different part of the audience or maybe said the opposite. In the clip I'm gonna show you at some time in the near future, uh, uh, Sir, uh, Francis, what's his name? Ah, I was going well and then my brain stopped. 
uh, Francis Schaefer, Sir Francis Schaefer, actually filmed a fake riot. I've talked about it on here before. They filmed it. They used the exact same footage. They cut the footage differently. And they released two uh, uh, reports of this riot. One of them was pro-police and one of them was pro-rioters. And they did this to show you how easy it is to manipulate you based on your preconceived notions, based what you're on your um, what you want to be true. But there's a way to know. If you scan, if you pull back and you see and you look at it and you don't bubble yourself, you actually look at the, the left wing version of that story and the right wing version of that story, knowing that neither one of those are true. And you see how those stories are framed. As you pan back, you can actually see what really happened. You can see it. It just forms in front of you. It's pattern recognition. So we know that a riot happened in uh, Michigan. And we know that there were different groups that were there. There were Proud Boys there and there was Antifa there. And we know that they ended up clashing and there was violence. If I go read this on some news aggregators or news sites, it's going to say things were going fine. This church was having a peace rally and the proud boy showed up marching through town and we don't want hate in this town. And they were just hating left and right. And then they just came and punched some Antifas in the face. And then we had a riot. That's what happened. And then you go read it on another site, and they're like, listen, these leftist Marxists were planning on ripping down statues, and they were planning on doing all this stuff, and some uh, American patriots showed up and just wanted to counter-protest, and they had their signs, and they got attacked out of nowhere by these Antifas, and that's what happened. Neither one of those things are likely what happened. What more likely happened is that there are groups of people who are trading on violence, who are trading on fear, who want there to be conflict. They want the government to overreact or they want the crowd to overreact. They want violence and they want as much uh, immoderation. They want as much uh, panic as possible. And so they paid people of different stripes or, they, or, or their organizers worked to get different people they knew were leaning towards violence and organize them to be in the same place at the same time and nature took over. Or some uh, um, elements in the crowd caused what they wanted to happen. Doesn't matter because they planned on writing the stories anyway. So when somebody writes to me and they say, they are doing this, they are doing that, it's most likely not true. Most likely, they are playing you and they are also playing your enemy. And they're playing you guys against each other so that you'll operate from your emotional center instead of your intellectual center. So that you won't prepare, so that you won't do things that are the best thing for you and your family and your neighbors and your church. And what they'll do is they'll turn you against that and they'll... Uh, cause you to scream out for the thing they have planned, which is the solution all along. Hello, Bob. You understand? So pattern recognition works in real life. Uh, uh, it took me a long time, and my wife's on here so she can uh, validate what I'm saying. It took me a long time to realize that narcissistic sociopaths pretty much act the same, even if they've never met each other. It took me a long time to recognize this. When you operate in the venue of um, off-grid living and community like an Amish or a plain community, you are a, a narcissistic sociopath magnet. In other words, people who don't want to be responsible for themselves, who are liars and who basically live their lives going from place to place, allowing other people to provide for them and do things for them, will be uh, attracted to that type of thing. It happens to the Amish all the time. 
And they act the same way because it is a mental illness. It is a mental and spiritual problem. It is actually emboldened by our uh, current educational system and our current social system. And so it took a long time for me to realize that, that people show up, they are very friendly, they are very helpful, they are very eager, they are all of these things. They've just had some troubles in their past that usually are very hard to get to the bottom of. Everybody else uh, in their past has done something to them or they've had to leave or they've jumped from group to group. They've moved from place to place. They're never solid. Most of the stuff they say can't be checked. You can't go back. They don't have 20 years of putting stuff on the internet that anybody can go look at. They don't, they're, they're, you can't go and check what kind of person they are. And usually what they're doing is they're looking for some situation for them that's going to be some ideal situation. And then you find out, once you open your doors to them, that they are bad people. They don't have the capacity for love. And I mean um, the love of humanity for um, the, the love of the truth, for the love of helping. They, they, uh, they don't have that capacity. They have the capacity of faking it for a while. You always find out who these, here's some ways to, the, some pattern recognition to find out who these people are. There's always a disaster in their wake. They're always moving on to something else. Whatever it is that they joined is broken when they leave. So that even, uh, that even can count for like the, the, uh, the church and the community we were a part of. When they took over, it was gone within two years, gone, finished. It had been around for 12, 13, 15 years. And then when they took over, it was gone. It was over. Yeah, they gaslight. They use a lot of, uh, a lot of techniques that are not learned. They're natural to their disorder. Governments work the same way. Systems work the same way. When there's something new, when there's some new thing, let me, let me give you a clue that's going to help you understand things a little bit. We have this, uh, and you hear me talk about a lot of time, this left-right dialectic where they have set up this system where people are not to think independently. You are forced, like in a prison, to join a gang, to put on a uniform and join a gang. You have to. And they force you there so that you always have to side with your uniform. And now they've got them swapping sides every day or two. One side's against it, and then the next week they're for it. One side is for it, and the next week they're against it. And they play them off against each other. And when you have that stuff going on, it makes the people easier to control. Because you blow the whistle, and they immediately get in line with their gang. Right? So once you understand this and you understand uh, how to see things, so when you walk into a, a store, when you walk into uh, uh, the mall or you walk into some area where it, a lot of this may be pre-COVID because maybe you're not doing these things now. If you're aware and you're awake and you're looking up, you'll see that there are categories of people. There are people that are looking at their shoes or they're looking at their phone or they're looking at their list and they never look up to see what's going on. They have no eye contact and they have no uh, connection with the world that's going on around them. And then of the people that are aware, that are looking up, that are paying attention, that are will make eye contact with you, there are two sorts. There are bad people and good people. You can learn through pattern recognition, through uh, behavior, through body um, um, movements, whether someone is likely bad or good by the way that they act, by, by their proximity, by things that they look at, by following their eye patterns. All of this is to say that to understand what's going on in the world then, you have to understand the playground. You have to understand the people that are in it. There are 
we have the left and the right, right? The left basically wants to put out the sun or to put out the light and then try to fix things in the dark. The right, they're fine with the light. They don't think anything's wrong or that anything needs to get fixed. For those of you who are a little slow, the light here represents civilization as we know it. Those of us who are a little bit broader in our understanding of the history of the world understand that civilization is hard. It is a hard thing. It took a long time to get here. You don't pass over uh, overpasses and have lines running underneath the ground and have water come out of the tap every time you open one and power and air conditioning and stores and food and 7,000 different brands of Cheerios uh, and, 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 and have that just happen. Civilization is hard. And in the beginning, it is brutal. It is unfair. And it is most likely all of the isms that people hate. What you hope, because every civilization has started that way that's lasted any length of time. Every civilization has started with slavery, has started with war, has started with pillage, has started with all of the dark things of human nature. But what you can hope for is that the light that civilization eventually brings, you can use that light to operate and make the thing work better. Perhaps you have amendments that stop things like slavery. Perhaps you can like things can get tweaked and you can like not have it where 50% of the population can't vote. That's what you can do when the light's on. The left wants to put out the light completely and try to fix things in the dark. And the right wants to act like there's nothing wrong with those things. Those of us who have a little broader understanding of history and all that think, hey, let's calm down a little bit. Acknowledge that a bunch of bad things happen in civilizations, and they have always happened in every civilization, including every race in history. But the good ones, after the brutal period, try to fix those things, try to make it maybe where it's not as brutal. But the lights come on and people, even poor people can get food and have cell phones and all those kind of things. So civilization is one of those things that we need in order to be able to look out there and see and make an interpretation of what's going on. Now, our civilization is made out of these groups of people. And these groups of people are pushing an agenda because of what they want. And once you recognize that, you can look out there at the news. You can look at the things that are being reported. You don't have to go and sit in front of CNN all day. I can know what CNN thinks in a minute and a half by going to their website and don't re- and just scanning it. I can tell you what their agenda is, that they had meetings that morning that said, this is the thing that we're going to be telling people and we're going to beat it all day long, 24 seven. And I can go to Fox news and I can find out exactly what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Exactly. And then I can pan back even farther. If you want, read our book, Wick, which you should, uh, should read, our narrator says this quite often. If you pan back, if you suddenly zoomed into the sky and looked down with a broader perspective, here's what you would see. If you did this, rather than sitting in front of the TV or listening to news radio or whatever, in a few minutes, you can figure out Here's what these people think. Here's what they want. Here's they want what they want me to do. Here's what their opponents think. Here's what they want. Somebody out there is controlling or is putting this news out there, and this is the direction they want the whole society to go. Scott Adams, uh, it was either this morning or last night, put on there that we have three civil wars right now that are inevitable to happen if something miraculously doesn't stop them. The biggest one is that both sides are planning on claiming the election was rigged. That's the one that I'm saying you can't back out of. You can't unclimb that rope. So we can know then, when you have three of them set up, and they're being set up by media, and they're being set up by constant propaganda, 
that that's what the people who are in power want. They want conflict because out of conflict comes great power. And it's generally our duty, those of us who are aware, who actually think, who aren't wearing the uniform and aren't in a particular camp, to sit there and say no, to do something else, to plan, to prepare, and to think. Hopefully by now, if you've been watching this whole video, you'll be able to start doing that. You can be aware when you walk into a store. You can look around and see things that are happening. When I hear the same thing three or four times throughout the day from somebody speaking in at a diner, and then I see it over here, or I see it on a movable billboard, or I see it on something, I can pretty much understand that there's probably something going on. Somebody's trying to communicate. Somebody could sit back there and go, boy, this guy's a conspiracy theorist. No, I am conspiratorial minded because I'm not an idiot. I understand that conspiracies have happened throughout all of history. I'm not stupid enough to think that rich people who have power do what they can to keep it. I'm not stupid enough to think that huge things happen and it's always a coincidence. In fact, I'm just too smart to be a coincidence theorist. However, you'll see me constantly checking the conspiracy theorist because usually they're getting their news from places that are being controlled. After I ran around in those circles for several years and I realized that when I was speaking in front of a room of 200 people, 150 of them were probably working for somebody. <laughs> I realized that that's not probably the best way to uh, share information. So that's one of the things you can learn. Pan back. Zoom back. Use your head. Keep your head on a swivel. Look around you. Pay attention to things. Patterns appear. When patterns appear, you can begin to see. We put all of this in the book, Wick. When you read it, you'll see it. There were things going on for years. One thing I said on this show way back at the beginning of the pandemic is I said, when you look back on these things, you can always see the path in which it could have happened. Looking forward from before the shooting of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, you could have never imagined the pattern that would eventually lead in uh, World War I. Nobody would have thought it was possible. That the shooting of one unremarkable politician would put the whole world in war and end up with 60 million dead over the next 45 years. But when you look backwards, you can go right back through everything that happened and it's completely and utterly predictable. Which means that it was one of the options, it was one of the things that was very likely to have happened. And we can do the same thing. It's one of the reasons I've been right so much over the last 15 or 20 years sitting here doing this. Uh, are narcissists a lost cause or can they change? Uh, have I answers correctly? Only the Lord can change someone. Anybody who ever says that people never change is an unrepentant person still in their sins. Most people will not change and most people don't change, but the only thing person that can only thing that can change anybody to that extent is God. Mary, I'm gonna disagree with you because there are people who are born again who are not who are no longer narcissists. That may be true of the one that you were with, but repentance requires that we understand that we were once completely and utterly irredeemable. That it wasn't our decision. It wasn't decisionism that changed us into a, a, a child of God, but it was an overwhelming work of grace that overthrew our complete and utter lack of any merit and our complete filthiness and gave us a new nature. So I'm going to disagree with you, Mary, although I love you, because uh, if it was not possible then I wouldn't be here. 
as a born again child of God. Uh, but only God can do it. They will never change. You're right. They cannot change on their own. It's not possible. And they cannot will to change. They cannot desire to change. They cannot choose to change. It has to be done to them overwhelmingly and violently by the King of Heaven. All right, y'all, I'm here for you. If you've got a question, if you've got a comment, anything you want to talk about. I understand exactly what you're saying, but uh, God is the great uh, physician. If anybody has a question or comment or anything you want to talk about, uh, please type your questions or comments into the comment section. I'd be glad to do it. we got a little bit of time. It's 40 minutes in. i got to kind of – sometimes my will – gets in the way and my will is to watch Yellowstone and see my buddy's song on there. I'm really, really hoping to see it. I listened to the whole song and I hope you guys will too. Uh, the song is called this way of life by Garrett Bradford. I'm going to disagree with you, Matthew. Big changes don't take his help. Big changes take his absolute overthrow of our nature and our character completely. Not help. We don't, we're not, we're not an assistant in it. <laughs> We are the net receiver of being overthrown. The scripture says that the stony heart has to be pulled out violently, replaced with a heart of flesh. That is not help. That is a operation of which we have no control. All right. So if anybody has any other questions or comments, I'm going to go ahead and get off that topic or people could go, you're just preaching at us. And by the way, we got rain last night, so it got cool, and it was cool this morning. And I actually put this long sleeve thing on, uh, and uh, and and I had sweats on because it it, it was like sixty eight degrees, I think, early this morning. Is it better to learn how to survive on less food or bulk up to survive longer? Uh, both of those things are good ideas. You can do both. Uh, I'm personally not bulking up because of the possibility however narrow that this uh, movie on my book is going to get made and i might get to be in it however i have said that if for some reason they chose me to be on the show alone or one of the survival shows i would probably put on 30 or 35 pounds uh because it's probably a good idea uh you can do so through uh intermittent intermittent fasting uh, which teaches you how to go long periods of time without, and I'm not talking about what not eating till six in the morning or nine in the morning or two in the afternoon. What they call intermittent fasting today is really skipping a meal. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to get into it. But internet, intermittent fasting today is like you don't eat after your last meal and then you kind of skip breakfast and then you don't eat, you know, maybe 16, 18 hours without a meal. That's to me, that's not intermittent fasting. I'm talking about going, learning to go one, two, three, seven days without food. And you can do so, and then you can actually go on a healthy uh, diet where you put on some weight so that you can uh, have some material to work with. Both things are possible. Uh, I, what I'm doing right now is called lean bulking, but it has a whole lot to do with uh, the possibility of the movie. It's not the best survival technique. All right, but and I don't recommend intermittent fasting or long term fasting for people who are just doing it to lose weight. Do ne never fast to lose weight. Uh, but that's a whole fitness thing. All right, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Did I miss some of them? Anything? Anything? Anyone? Hey, everybody, I want to tell you uh, if you would go over to uh, YouTube, maybe after this thing is over, and uh, uh, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I think we're up to 1,819 subscribers, and I'm trying to get to 2,000, but it's going really slowly. And every time I do a show like this, I lose three to five subscribers because I make them mad because I'm talking about the left or I'm talking about the right or I'm talking about darkness or I'm talking about whatever, and people get mad. So uh, hit the like button, subscribe. Hey, you guys, I wanted to tell you something. I started a fundraiser. I'm going to do a whole video on that, but I wanted to do this video because I thought it was important as a survival technique. Something I wanted to give you, but I'm doing a fundraiser. I finally got it started. And that is that um, 
we're trying to raise some money for the channel for the whole plan of what we're trying to do is uh, get getting content out there get some people to subscribe to me then that would be appreciated where is the book wick available it is available on amazon.com pretty much anywhere where you can buy books online most of the time that's not available in bookstores it's been out since 2013 so just to order it online it's a real big thick book uh but it's definitely worth it definitely uh, and and a bunch of people have been rereading it recently and we're getting a ton of uh comments so anyways the fundraiser is going on and i i wrote a little thing it's on my facebook facebook.com forward slash off grid about why we're doing the fundraiser what we're going to do with the money and one of the things i'm trying to encourage people to do is to get a show like this uh bigger get more subscribers get more people to see it because i think it's just a point of view that's different than what people are getting everywhere else you know i think it's valuable i think art is valuable and especially in a uh, times like these as they say in every commercial thank you mary i appreciate it uh that is always a great thing when somebody does that and my mouth stops working <laughs> Thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. And then I'll do this for Ethan, too. Come on, Ethan. Get some people to subscribe to me. Thank you, Have a. I appreciate it. So the fundraiser is basically so that we can encourage this. We can expand it. I want to get on more platforms. You know, it'd be great. We don't have to be as get as big as uh, uh, Joe Rogan, but why can't we? I don't know. I think this stuff's good enough, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> I appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, go to uh, facebook.com forward slash off grid. Uh, send me a friend request. You can also send donations directly through private messenger. You can go to michaelbunker.com, which is what it said. I always get this wrong. It's backwards right here. Michaelbunker.com. All kinds of stuff you can do there, but right around here. On that page, there's a place where you can subscribe and become a partner and do a monthly donation, whatever. So I love you guys. Lord willing, I'll see you. I'm going to do a show specifically about the fundraiser at some point. And I also want to do a third part of the book. All right, y'all. Love you. Talk to you soon.